Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at making your own drum rack in Ableton using Simpler. This is a really fun and easy way to create your own original MIDI instrument to use in live performance and it's a technique my students and I use regularly. So let's get into it. Alright, so when you open a new session in Ableton, this is what you're going to see. Two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. Just to keep things clean for us, I'm going to delete one of those MIDI tracks and I'm going to delete both of the audio tracks. You can do that simply by clicking the track you want to delete and then pressing delete or backspace on your keyboard. Uh, now we have one MIDI track left, uh, which is what we want for Simpler. I'm going to go over to my browser. So this over here is your browser. I'm going to click Instruments. And then there's two ways you can add Simpler to a new MIDI track. Uh, one is to double click, which is what I just did there. Um, another way is you can simply uh, click and hold and drag it to the track you want. All right, so now that we have Simpler on our MIDI track, we need to bring in an audio file to use for our drum rack. Uh, so this audio file is one that I uh, created for a previous project. We're going to use an excerpt of it for our drum rack. I want to click that audio file, drag it into Simpler, and now you can see the waveform of the audio file. Simpler has three modes it operates in. There's classic mode, which we're currently in, and there's also one shot and slice modes that we'll talk about here in just a minute. Let's start with classic mode. So the first thing I want to do is just let you hear the sample at pitch. I want to do that by pressing middle C on my MIDI device. So there's just a little bit of that sample. The first thing I want to do is get the sample to start right on the kick drum. So that's the third transient of this audio sample. I'm going to do that by adjusting this uh, line here. And I'm going to hold command and scroll, use the mouse scroll to zoom in. And then I'm going to put it right at the start of that transient. So now, there it is right at the kick drum. Okay, so one thing that uh, classic mode does that's really fun is that it takes whatever audio uh, sample you're using and it chromatically transposes it across your MIDI device. So I can now play my experimental rendition of my Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean for chromatically tuned drum sample using simpler classic mode. <laughs> Yeah, so classic mode really quickly uh, can uh, let you create a fun instrument to use in live performance. My students love using classic mode. Um, the other thing that classic mode does really, really great, and the way I use it a lot, is um, if you're playing a piece that requires uh, a rare instrument, um, rather than purchasing a fully chromatic set of Omglocken, which would be thousands of dollars, um, you could instead take a sample of one Omglocken and then have that be chromatically transposed across a MIDI instrument and then use that instead of uh, the, the actual acoustic instrument. So it does come in handy in a lot of other practical ways. So that's classic mode. There's a lot of other really fun parameters that you can adjust in this mode. Um, so let me just share a few of those with you. The, the attack dial. So for example, if I turn that all the way up, now when I press a key, the sample's going to fade in. Cool. So that's the attack dial. Um, the release dial. Um, right now, if I press the key, the sample plays. And when I lift off the key, it stops. So that's how that works. If I turn it all the way up, though, I can press the key. And it's going to play out, and it'll kind of gradually fade out over time. Um, there's also this retrigger button. And uh, if I have notice, if I press this key multiple times, the sample is going to start over. But if I turn that off, Now you can press a key multiple times, and each time you press it, the sample is going to play all the way out. So that's kind of that can be fun to to, to mess around with. Um, another thing you can do is adjust the amount of voices that can play at one time. So if I select one voice, if I press this key and then I press another key, the first key I press is going to be overridden. So so it really lets one voice play at a time. Uh, of course, I can do the opposite there, and I can turn the voices all the way up, and now. Lots of fun ways to get cool and interesting sounds and to make a fun and inspiring uh, original 
MIDI device instrument very quickly. And my students love using this. Of course, there's a bunch of other different parameters you can adjust by clicking the uh, controls window. You can mess with how velocity sense of the instrument is. You can mess with panning. You can mess with uh, small changes in tuning at the, at the synth level. You can also transpose the instrument. There's also a filter that you can adjust and do stuff with. <laughs> Yeah, so all kinds of fun things that you can do in classic mode of Simpler. All right, so the next thing I'd like to talk about is slice mode of Simpler. So slice mode of Simpler is essentially kind of the, the beginning of how you start to create your drum rack. So now you'll notice that this uh, sample that we're using um, has a bunch of blue lines on it, and those blue lines coincide different sort of cut up small sections of that sample across my MIDI device. So if I start here on C2, I can go automatically and you can see now that each one has a little audio clip to play. All right, and it's kind of um, just analyzing the, the waveform and kind of picking up different transients is, is what's happening. Slice mode has a bunch of different parameters you can adjust. There's a fade in that you can adjust, so, so that fades it in, obviously. Um, I do usually like to have a little bit of a fade in just so you avoid any types of like pops at beginnings and ends of your audio clip. And you can uh, adjust this a little better later, so don't worry too much about it. You can transpose your sample. I'm not going to do that now because I want it to be kind of at pitch. And also you can adjust your velocity sensitivity. Um, just to demonstrate that, that means kind of like how hard I play in relation to how loud it gets. So I, I personally like it about 35%, so I'm going to leave it there. But just to show you what it can do. So now wider dynamic range by turning the percentage up. So I'm going to put it back at 35%. All right, cool. So those are just some of the parameters. You also have some in the controls window that can change some things. The main thing I want to talk about is sensitivity. So right now, uh, for me, there's just a few too many of those blue lines for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to pull the sensitivity back to make each one of these clips a little bit longer, picking up fewer of the transients because I'm not going to need um, all of those kick drums and all of those snare drums. I only, only want one of each to, to build my drum rack. Um, so let's try this. I'm going to go at 53%. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click in the window. And then I'm going to uh, select slice to drum rack. And so now I have a drum rack that plays every one of those clips with little blue lines. So essentially about two octaves worth of little samples I can use that are on a drum rack. Uh, I'm not going to use all of these. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is try to clean this rack up to make an instrument that makes sense to me to perform. So in order to do that, I'm going to click a couple buttons to give us some more options. Um, so first I'm going to show the chain list. So I'm going to click that. And then next I'm going to show the input output section. Um, so now I have just a couple different views right here, all those same clips. Slice one, slice one, slice two, slice two, slice three, slice th three. Uh, they essentially are exactly the same. They're just different views and, and different things you can adjust. Um, so the first thing I want to do is clean this up and get rid of things I don't need. So let's see what we have. So there's a kick drum. Great. So let's, let's call that our kick drum. Um, let's see what we have next. We have a hi-hat. I'm going to need a hi-hat and then... That's another kick drum. I don't need that, so I'm going to select that. Hit backspace. Now it's gone. There's another hi-hat. I already have a hi-hat. And then here is another hi-hat. There's a snare drum. So I'm going to keep that as a snare drum. So these are my three primary instruments. Uh, there's kick, there's hi-hat, there's snare. So let me rename those. I'm going to select the slice here under chain. Click Command-R, kick. Sorry. And then click... Command R again, snare, or hi-hat, excuse me, hat, and then snare. All right, excellent. And then also, I want a crash symbol, and that was right here. Right there it was, so let's call that crash. All right, I'm going to slide that up to the top where everything else is. Very good. And now, I'm going to delete everything that I don't need, so I'm going to get rid of all of that. Excellent. So the next thing I want to do is just kind of rearrange this stuff so, again, it sort of makes sense to me. I like my kick and my snare 
near one another. I usually play that with one hand, and then I like my hi-hat and my crash near each other. I play that with another hand. Um, so the next thing I can do is select the MIDI notes that play each one of these um, uh, samples. So we have kick currently on C, which is what I like. Uh, next, I like my snare to be played by D1. So there's that. And then my hi-hat, I like to be played by F. There it is. And then crash, I would like to be played by G. All right, so next, I just want to check each one of these samples and make sure it looks and sounds the way I want it to. So I just double-clicked kick. And so now I have my kick. There's the sample. I don't really like the way it kind of just disappears, so I want to increase the fade out. Seems a little nicer to me. So there's my kick. Let's check the snare. Okay, and I want to get rid of that hi-hat in there, so I want to move the ending point forward and turn my fade out just a little bit. All right, so I have kick and snare. And then let's check the hi-hat. You can move around too just by pressing the sample so it sh shows you the view as soon as you press that. Okay, I'm just going to turn the fade out out on that one too. And I'm going to back the starting point up just a little bit. All right, I like that. And then crash. This is the one that needed the most change because there's extra stuff in there. So let me move that forward and that back. And good. All right, so now we have a crash. Fantastic. So I have four sounds now. Kick, snare, hi-hat, crash. Starting to get a drum rack now. The next thing I want to do, so notice if I press two buttons at once, it's only letting one voice through. So this is an important thing to adjust right here, the choke. Notice that each one of these voices has one selected, so you can only play one thing at a time. I usually turn the choke off, and that allows you to play as many voices as you want. I'm sure there's a time and a place in performance where you might want to have one voice cut everything out. That's up to you and, and your own uh, drum rack or MIDI instrument that you're creating. So now that I've made that adjustment, I should be able to play a beat. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to share with you is how to add effects and processing to your samples. And this is such a really cool feature of Simpler in Ableton. Um, so uh, one typical way you might want to use this feature is like, for example, if you're using raw audio, you might want to add EQ and compression uh, to make your kick drum sound, you know, like a, like a nice sounding kick drum would sound. Um, the sample I'm using has already had that done. So I'm going to show you how to add some other things. So let's go over here to our browser and just for fun we're going to add um, some overdrive to my kick drum. So, so now that's completely changed how the kick drum sounds. And we can make all kinds adjustments. Um, so you can essentially add these effects and processing to each individual sample so that they're all unique. You could also add the effects to the entire track. Um, so you would do that by instead of dragging it to the individual sample, let's do delay. So, so there is a simple delay. Let me put that right on the track. And so now That effect, the delay that I've added, is is um, uh, on every single one of the samples because I've added it to the track. The other way, of course, that you could add these effects is by creating a return track. Um, let me share with you that. So right now I have one return track that is reverb, um, and you can adjust the amount of reverb on your track by turning up the A dial. A return track, A dial. Now reverb is on the entirety of my track. So there are some of the ways that my students and I use Simpler and Ableton to create original drum racks and other MIDI instruments to use in live performance. In the next video, we'll take a look at how your drum rack can be used with live looping and drum sequencing in Ableton.